Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. I got a couple of interesting things to share with you today. Uh, this, this is a BC. Now, anybody who's been diving for more than 25 years recognizes this BC. This is what was called the May West style BC. Went over your neck like a life preserver. The very earliest BCs like this <clears throat> is where the May West reference started. Google May West, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so this is a May West style of BC, and these were very common. In fact, this was the BCD, if you like, the BC uh, uh, of choice uh, until the stab jacket came along, and that was in the 80s. So from the mid-60s until the mid-80s, this is what you wore when you went scuba diving, just like this. Let me explain it quickly, just in case you don't know what it is, but it is, it is an air cell, very simply. And you put this over your head, like so. And, and, and there's a strap that goes around your waist, like so, fastened. And there's a strap that goes down and up, and down your back, and up through your crotch area, like so. And, and it had to be adjusted just perfectly, or it wouldn't be a comfortable dive. But once it was on, it was firmly attached to your body, you see. And then, if you needed to, uh, to have some buoyancy control, some help with your buoyancy, you could use this device, this BC, it was a BC, to, to, to help in that regard. Adjust the buoyancy. If you needed to add some air, just like you do with a BC today, you take that, add a bit of air. It gave you a bit of buoyancy when you're on the bottom, and maybe your wetsuits can, you know how it works. Anyway, you need some buoyancy adjustment. To let air out, you did the same thing. Pull it over your head, or it actually had dumps as well. There's a dump up here, and you pull on this, and the air dumped up. So it's a pretty standard buoyancy compensator. You'll notice a couple of things. First of all, it does not have an automatic inflate. Most of the BCDs today, whether it's a May West style, this horse collar, horse collar. Yeah, that's what it was called later. May West was gone by the mid 40s, I think. So nobody knew who May West was, so this BC became called the horse collar which is actually equally descriptive. May West horse collar, same type of thing, right? Uh, but uh, the, the later horse collars like this had an automatic inflate system, just as we do today, that connects to your tank, right? And you squeeze a button to inflate it. But prior to that, we blew it up to get the buoyancy you wanted. Okay, so it's a pretty standard horse collar uh, style of buoyancy compensator. Nothing special about it. Oh, yes, there is something very special about this BC. Let me explain the reason for this BC, and, and that'll explain the reason for wh why it's special. This is a self-inflating BCD. Now, that's not a really uh, accurate descriptive term because it doesn't inflate on itself. You have to do something. Self-inflating implies that it does it on its own. Now, that wouldn't be good. But this BC inflates even if you don't blow into it. Right. Well, how's that possible? It doesn't have a hose to the tank, doesn't have a button, it doesn't have an automatic PIV, power inflate button on it. How does it inflate without being connected to the tank? Well, I'll show you that in just a minute. But let me explain why. First of all, this is a little bit odd in that it came from the UK. Now, that doesn't mean that things from the UK are odd. Uh, they are, but that's not what I'm trying to imply here. And remember that my background is British. My dad was born in Kent. All, all, my, all my readers and watchers from the UK, yeah. Uh, however, it, it did come from the UK. It's a little bit odd. When buoyancy compensators first came out, divers slowly embraced them. At first, they didn't embrace them. There was that hairy chest diver attitude in the very beginning. I'm not going to wear one of those. I don't need a life vest. I'm a good diver. What do I need a life vest for? You see? But so, fortunately, we, we got by that. And I have to be honest with you. I started diving in the, in, in the late 50s, and I was part of that, mm. being honest, okay? But we got over that fairly quickly. You don't need a 12-inch dive knife, and yes, the buoyancy compensator is useful. Uh, however, that attitude hung on for a while, but eventually the BCD, the BC, this form, became acceptable, and divers started to use them. The advantages were simply too great and too obvious. Once you dived with one of these, it was fantastic. So divers accepted them. However, a little later, <clears throat> some wise guy came along with this power inflate valve. Yeah, it was an aftermarket thing. It was aftermarket. You didn't buy a power inflate valve when you bought an Aqualung BC in those days. No, no, no. You bought an Aqualung BC, it looked a little bit like this, use a yellow. And then if you looked in the Skin Diver magazine advertisements, you found this neat little thing called a automatic BCD inflate valve. Whoa, that's pretty neat. And you could buy this, and it came with a valve, a hose, and all you did was take off this 
wire tie. The valve fit in there, put two wire ties back on and run the hose to your tank. And you had a power inflate valve, just as we do today. Today, of course, they're all built into the BCD right from the manufacturer. Back then, back then it was an aftermarket. Eventually, because it was so popular, manufacturers started making them. However, when they first came out, some of those old uh, hairy chested divers that I referred to earlier, you know, I don't want to have one of those automatic inflate valves. I don't want to have a power inflate valve. That takes air out of the tank. I don't want to do that. I want to stay down as long as possible. I don't want a BCD that you blow up for air from the tank. No, I don't want to. No, no. You know, see, so it was that kind of an attitude that wasn't very intelligent. Because in time, we discovered, no, so I said we, <laughs> we discovered that judicial use of the BCD actually saves air. That's right. As you're descending very slowly, as you find you're getting more and more negative, you have two choices, right? You can kick to keep yourself up. Kicking uses air. Or you can go, psh, psh, a couple of little shots of air, which you'll never miss, and you stabilize. You become neutral again. So in time, we learn that careful, experienced, once you're experienced, careful use of the BCD actually saves air. And so now the, the power inflate mechanism is universal. But partly because of the attitude and partly because the, the British are a little bit odd, they developed this particular BCD. Now this model is known as the Fenzi. The Fenzi was a very popular model. Okay? And now let me show you what's different about it. You might notice, excuse me. Get my hair back in place. You might notice on the back of the BCD it has a back strap, it has a waist strap, and so on. And it has this odd valve type of thing right here. What's that for? Well, let me tell you what that's for. Let me show you. This BCD came with a scuba tank. How about that? Now, this is actually looks just like a scuba. It even has a scuba valve on it. Look at that. And air in it. Too. Woo! What's all this about? Well, it's very simple. Let me explain how it works, first of all. Uh, maybe I better start with how you feel this. This is actually a scuba tank. Yeah? It's a very small scuba tank. But, but uh, the later versions were actually 3,000 PSI. The earlier versions, of course, were not 3,000 PSI because we didn't have 3,000 PSI. But anyway, what you would do if you had one of these BCDs with one of this self-inflate mechanism, you would actually put this onto your tank. See, it's a yoke. So you put this yoke onto your tank, like that. And then you turn on your tank, like that. And then you turn on this valve, like that. And this tank fills from your tank. Okay? This is now full. You turn it off. And you turn off your tank valve. There's a little button here to push. To, so, so because there's air in there under pressure, you're going to release that. It's the same as pushing your purge button before you take your rain. You push that little button, and you take this off. Now, this tank is full. Now what do you do? Well, watch. You take this tank, and it fits right into its own sleeve. We're going to call that the tank sleeve. I'm pretty good at making up good names like that. Yeah. <laughs> you put it into the sleeve. I don't know what it's called. And then... Watch enough. You see, this actually looks like a valve, doesn't it? Looks just like a valve. Well, sure enough. So you turn this, and you actually fit it together, just like putting a regulator onto a valve. Look at that. Fits on beautifully, just like so. And you're all set to go. Let's go diving. Now, one of the small advantages of this BCD, uh, odd from Great Britain or not, is academic. One of the small advantages of this BCD is it's heavy. This weighs about five pounds more than it did before. That tank is a steel tank full of air, weighs about five pounds. So you could actually get away with a little less weight on your weight belt. That's always good. I think we agree on that. So here we go. All right, let's go diving, Kevin. Out we go. So we're all neutral at the surface because we've worked our weight out because we're really cool divers. And we start to descend. And as you start to descend, as you know, your wetsuit gets compressed. And actually your body changes in shape too. Point is that you start to get negative. Hence the BCD, buoyancy compensator device. So now we go. We get down about 20, 30 feet, and we're starting to get negative. Well, what do you do? Well, you can if you have a power inflate valve, but we don't with the Fenzi. What do we do with the Fenzi? <coughs> See? <coughs> May West. <laughs> so I put air in the, from my own little tank. Look at that. You see that? Whoa! A, well, a little bit too much. So dump some out. Push the button on the end. Or pull one of the dump valves. Air comes out. Buoyancy compensating device. Self-inflating. Not connected to your tank. It's got its own air supply. <coughs> dump, dump. How about that? I'm not sure if you've seen one of these before. you got to admit it's pretty neat. 
These were actually very popular, very popular in the UK, and they were somewhat popular in North America as well. A few in Canada and quite a few in the United States, but unfortunately their popularity didn't last for a long time for a couple of reasons. They weren't inexpensive. A normal BC would cost about $60. This BC would cost about $150 because they had to have the tank and the high pressure fittings as well, you see. So it was quite expensive, one reason. Secondly, a power inflate valve that I talked about, much simpler. And it became accepted among divers fairly quickly. So there was no need for this particular mechanism. So for a couple of reasons, and also the BCDs changed. They changed from this horse collar style to the stab jacket that we enjoy today. You put your arms in and goes around your body, and you ha it's part of your tank. So for several reasons, this particular style of BC didn't last a long time. But it's very definitely an important part of diving history, and now you've seen it. Okay, I'm going to go diving. I'm going to head down. You okay, Kevin? Okay? All right, see you guys. I'm going diving with my Fenzy self-inflating BC. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> See you again real soon.